Christmas Eve. Uh, we come to that time of year when the buzz of anticipation has sort of reached its peak. I know that right up until the service began, I know I felt a sort of sense that we were almost there, but not quite yet. But the minute I set foot in the chapel, it was like, finally, all right, we're here, good. But we've arrived. We've made it to this, the night of nights. And we can begin to celebrate what we've been waiting for for so long. And if you're a sleep-deprived parent, or a shopping-weary spouse, or a jet-lagged visitor, or a hand-sore Christmas card writer, I hope that tonight can be for you a time of pause, a time to sort of catch your breath and rest for a short while in what this season is all about. And with that in mind, I'd like to talk about the meaning of Christmas, and I'd like to use an image that I think most of us here will be familiar with, the Charlie Brown Christmas special. <laughs> now I have to say here that uh, this short little cartoon is still something that I look forward to every single year, and you can ask my wife, Life Davis, if there's anything else going on, I will stop it dead cold if you like we're watching this program right now. <laughs> I take my traditions seriously. <laughs> anyway, if you've seen it, then I'm quite sure you are familiar with the story of how Charlie Brown is sort of disenchanted with the materialism and commercialism around Christmas, and in an attempt to discover the true meaning, he decides to direct the local Christmas play. And when he picks out a rather pathetic looking Christmas tree uh, as a prop, the uh, exceptionally unruly cast really lets him have it. They make fun of him to no end. And he expresses his frustration by asking just what the heck is the meaning of Christmas? And her Linus, who recounts the story from Luke's Gospel about the angels telling the shepherds the good news of Jesus' birth, and Linus' retelling of the Gospel story changes everyone's focus. Everyone begins to appreciate the beauty of this pathetic little tree, and all's well that ends well. Does this sound familiar to you all? Okay, very good. Now, if you're familiar with this, uh, the, the Charlie Brown Christmas special, then my hope is that I, as I was sort of rehashing the synopsis, the images of it came to mind. You know, I hope that you've got a good picture in your mind of, you know, Charlie Brown in his uh, red winter coat and little deer stalker hat, of Lucy and her psychiatric help five cents booth, you know, Snoopy's dog decorated house, uh, a shredder bending over his piano and playing a pig pen, playing that giant stand up bass. But if there's one image from the Charlie Brown Christmas special that really captures the essence of the Christmas story, it's the image of Linus. If you can conjure up in your mind an image of Linus, I'd be willing to bet that you're thinking of him, you know, holding his little blue blanket to the side of his head and sucking his thumb. Or at the very least, holding his blue blanket. Now, as symbols go, that blanket indicates that Linus is, you know, maybe a little childish and certainly maybe a little neurotic. The fact that he's always got that blanket tells me that that blanket is a source of comfort for him. And if you know a child, or even an, adult, even an adult, who has a safety blanket, then you know how important a safety blanket can be. Which is what, which makes what Linus does with the blanket when he tells the gospel story of Christmas all the more meaningful. Now if you recall, when Charlie Brown throws up his hands and asks, is there, isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Linus very matter-of-factly says, why, yes, Charlie Brown, I can tell you what the meaning of Christmas is. And he walks out on the, onto the stage with his blanket in tow. And he begins to tell the story of the shepherds in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. Still holding his blanket, he says that when the angel of the Lord appeared to them, they were sore afraid. Don't you just love the King James translation of that? But when he tells the story of how the angels say, fear not, he drops his blank. And he goes on to tell the rest of that story without his blank. Now that might seem to be a very minor detail, but I think it speaks volumes to what the message of Christmas really is. Because no matter who we are or where we come from, my guess is that we all have our own versions of Linus's safety blanket. 
things or feelings or habits that we become attached to, which we think are there to make us feel safe or to make life a little bit more bearable. And especially around Christmas time, we can cling ever more tightly to whatever we think it is that protects us. Because, you know, all the hoopla of the Christmas season can leave us feeling like there's no real meaning to it all, and that we have to protect ourselves from the banality of the holidays. Maybe even coming to church can be one of the safety blankets that we cling to this time of year. You know, we get to sing familiar hymns and light our candles and hear the story of Jesus' nativity. And doing all that protects us from our fear of being taken in by the crass materialism that normally attends this season. And if that's the case, I think there are far worse things that we can use as a safety blanket. But I do want to point out that the story of Christmas is not about being protected or feeling safe. It's actually quite the opposite, if you think about it. You know, a helpless baby born to a poor couple who have taken refuge in a shelter for livestock. The Christmas story is about vulnerability and openness. God's vulnerability in taking on human flesh and God's openness to all of us in saying that God is truly with us. And the Christmas story is about casting fear aside. It's about entertaining the idea that there is a joy of message and hope that allows us to set aside our fear, to let our guard down, even if it's just for a moment, and to receive the Christmas story not as just a familiar tale about shepherds and angels and a baby all wrapped up in a safety blanket, but to hear the story and to receive it as a part of our own lives. And yes, we may go from here and like Linus, pick back our safety blanket up and life will go on as usual. But if even for a short time, we were able to set aside our fears and rest in the good news that God is truly with us, then this Christmas season will have brought about the, good, the, the gift of hope that knows no fear. And if we're able to receive that gift, then we'll know the true meaning of Christmas.